Okay, so today what we're talking about is barrel valve and leak down. As you can see, if you look in the inlet line, you'll see what we call the lizard tongue. Now some of them are shaped like a lizard tongue and some of them have, we have modified and squared off. But as you give it gas, you see everything open up. But see that little lizard tongue? See the groove in there? That's the spool. That little groove is in the spool is what the motor idles off of. Same thing can be seen here. See the little lizard tongue? That is rotated back. Rotates down as you give it gas. That's what we're talking about today. Okay, so with that being said, blown alcohol, naturally aspirated motors and the barrel valve are set up a little different. When you flow your barrel valve, you want to block off your idle check valve, which is right here. This up here, guys, some guys run them blocked off, some guys run them, known as your pump saver. Okay, so make sure that you all can see this. Let's flow this one. Put your first gauge on 100. And read what's this second. Now right now, just as an example, I'm showing you what a naturally aspirated motor would be set up at. We're resisting 70% and we're allowing 30% to go into the motor. How do we know that our gauges read that way? Because some gauges read differently. We're going to simply open up the throttle. Obviously, we see that we're leaking 30% into the motor. This would be for a naturally aspirated motor. Now, a blower motor would be leaking 80%. Did you hear the tone change? So how do we know that our gauges are reading right on 20 versus 80? Just give a little gas. And you're able to make those changes. Blower motors will leak 80% into the motor. We're an actually aspirated, we'll leak only 30. Now, with saying that, one of the misconceptions is, and it's really that it's not a misconception, but what you have to realize is, let me shut this all the way down. How clean do you want your oil? We used to tune off the barrel valve a whole lot. We don't necessarily do it no more with the two steps on the blown applications. Now on a naturally aspirated motor, you will see where if you want to keep your oil clean and have the motor build some decent heat, then you would only want to leak 20%, 25%. Usually 20% will stumble uh, when you hit the throttle like that. It'll just, you know, or when you burp them like that and they hit, have a good hit to them, then you're okay. But if you on the start line or in the burnout and you go to whack the throttle and you hear the motor hesitate, Generally, if it's barrel valve related, it'll be a little on the lean side. But now when we were running naturally aspirated, we wanted to, um, they say you can like uh, do away with your radiator and all that. Well, you can, but you got to run your barrel valve rich uh, into the 30% uh, leaking into the motor. It'll keep it cool. Uh, it'll milk the oil and stuff like that. But now if you want to run a radiator, uh, like we, I, I generally recommend, only for the fact and reason is so we can leak the barrel valve on the leaner side, say 25% going into the motor. You'll still get good throttle response, no hesitation, but the, the, the oil won't be so milky. Now on a blower motor, if you're trying to tune off the barrel valve, if you're not leaving on a two-step, 
There's good tunability there. It's an extra tunability tool. If you're leaving on the two-step, your barrel valve really ain't doing nothing. So with that being said, um, yeah, I mean, it is controlling fuel into the motor, it, but then you have your idle check valve you can change. Main jet, which obviously we don't want to change idle characteristics off of our main jet. So with saying that, there's some, um, some things to think about. Okay, you see this little adjusting nut right here? Okay, I want y'all to watch something. See, see the barrel vi or see the uh, butterflies moving? There's play in there. Now from side to side, now what's keeping this thing in its play is this one right there. So as I'm moving this, that one right there is not moving. That one right there is bottomed out. So what this uh, particular application is seeing that I want you guys to take note of is I see this a lot. And that is, let's go up to 100 PSI, 100 pounds. All right, so we're at, we're leaking 80% into the motor. Now watch this gauge. See the fluctuation? I have seen motors generally lope because their idle circuit is rich. But I have seen these lope because this is not adjusted right. So all you want to do is just take your 3 8 and run this down to where they're even. I ain't going to be able to turn it without an Allen head. Dang, dumb it. So anyway, you want to turn that and adjust that down to where you don't have that. I actually moved it a little bit. Uh, I can't turn it without an Allen head. So anyway, keep that in mind. You want these to be bottomed out at the same when everything is good and shut. You can set your blades down here with the feeler gauge around 10 thousandths. Usually the brass, the brass, on a feeler gauge, uh, usually the brass on a feeler gauge set is the ten thousandths one, so kind of conforms a little bit better if you have the round barrel valve or uh, blades uh, instead of the square ones like this. This right here is a lot easier, so uh, take note of that and remember that. Okay, so what did we learn? Let's do a recap. I'm only going to talk about the blower side of things. Why did why was the barrel valve such a tunable aid back in the day when we used to swap feet? Well, we'd be starting the fuel system off on the richer side. How much? It's just a little bit, but it's the fact that when we rolled through the barrel valve, when you rolled through the barrel valve and you swapped feet with the clutch car, you added a tuning aid like I was saying earlier. Uh, if you started out on the lean side, you started out on the higher side of your fuel curve which would make the car hit the clutch, tires, everything a little bit harder. So then you could have adjusted your clutch. You know, back in the day, we used to adjust our clutches for the fact of what our barrel valve was set at, how much main we had on it versus, you know, we wanted a rich, a lot of finger weight, a lot of base setup, or we went lean and mean, where we had our barrel valve leaking, say, only 72. Uh, 74 and then if we came back and we're like man that thing was wanting to rattle the tires a little bit when well, I swapped feet yeah we had the clutch adjustments but then we also could have just put a little bit of barrel valve in very simple we don't tune off the barrel valve like that like we used to back in the day but I could have rolled in uh, and, and shoot eight pounds back in you know I used to have it figured out uh, where every flat was like two pounds so it would go two pounds two pound and then it would all of a sudden jump like three pounds. So it wasn't super consistent, but it was something that we could do very quickly if we felt like we needed to at the last minute. So we could start off with it being rich and the fuel system would be on the richer side. It, the motor, uh, like you drinking a big Pepsi uh, or a Nietzsche Nitro, you would guzzle a whole lot more fuel into the motor, which kept it a little bit on the calmer side if you were uh, tuned up that critical, which back in the days and even now we are but we're living off the two-step now so this thing is wide open so we don't have no more barrel valve that we're actually tuning off of 
So with that being said, okay, remember, there are a thousand different ways of doing this stuff. If you are dealing with someone who says, oh, that's got to be like that, or it's got to be on this, or the barrel valve's that, or this main jet, or you got, you can't do this, you can't do that, walk away from that guy. There's a thousand different ways of doing this stuff, and a hundred different roads to get to those thousand different ways. So just always remember, every situation is unique. Uh, there's a lot of good people out there with some good information that can help you, but at the end of the day, not everything is ironclad. I've always said two plus two isn't four, always on the racetrack. It could be three, five, six. We do it on paper the best we can. We hit the racetrack and uh, let the numbers fall where they want to fall. Other than that, flow it so you know it. Go to AaronSimple.com. Visit us there. You'll see our work. And if you have any questions, shoot us a message. If we can help you, great. Um, if, if we can't do it over the phone because it's too um, tedious of a question or a situation you're going through, send the unit in. We can flow it so we know. Have a great day. And always remember, simple 3.1.